Four out of five students who came to see me last week at the golf projects were really suffering with the direction of their iron shots, but also their ball striking. The great thing is we were able to transform every single one of them in slightly different ways. In today's video, I want to show you five simple ways you can transform your iron ball striking. Simple adjustments that you can make in your golf swing and set up and during the swing as well to help you get that great compression ball and turf interaction afterwards and start to see a lot more control, way more accuracy and distance also. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Harry, PJ Golf Professional, down here at The Golf Projects, transforming golfers worldwide. If you'd like to get involved, be sure to hit a comment down below the tips or drills video you would like me to cover in a future one. And in this video, we're gonna be answering a question that came up in the comments section for the previous video, looking for simple adjustments to help improve their ball striking. I'm not gonna be telling you one, we're gonna be looking at five simple ways you can transform your ball striking. So starting off with tip number one, what we noticed Alex do quite a lot when he came to see me for the golf lesson last week was he was setting up with his sternum, not realizing, but he was setting up with his sternum very far behind the golf ball. And when we do this, it causes massive inconsistencies in ball striking, usually getting that turf then ball interaction afterwards. And we noticed also it was getting very over the top and cutting across the ball massively also. So the first thing we looked at was we were ensuring that we were trying to keep our sternum well over the golf ball. We didn't want to encourage the sternum to go too far ahead of the golf ball like this here, because then we're gonna be chopping down the golf ball and that's not gonna be very good either. It's gonna cause other wayward shots as well. What we did was we just got the golf club like this here and set it right next to our sternum and we just made Alex aware of where his sternum was, whether it was behind the golf ball or ahead of the golf ball. We just set it in position. To him it felt like he was going slightly ahead of the golf ball just because he was so used to being too far behind and obviously hitting the ground first, struggling to get that solid contact. So we just made him more aware of where that sternum was placed and now it's directly in the center over the golf ball. And just before we hit a couple of shots, what we did was we just set up ensuring that sternum was in line with the golf. We don't want to be over like this because then we're going to lose balance, just like this here, nice and planted. We just made a few practice swings, being aware of this, trying to ensure that we're keeping our sternum over in line with that golf ball. And a very easy way of doing this is take an alignment stick like this, and this is what we did with Alex. We just placed it on the ground like so, a couple of inches behind the golf ball like this here. And as we set up, we had that alignment stick directly in the middle of the stance just for these practice routines with the sternum over that alignment stick. So when we were making our swings back and through, we were ensuring that we were keeping that sternum on top of the alignment stick, therefore over the golf ball. And this transformed his ball striking, but we were still noticing that little sly shot with the irons. This moves us on into tip number two which is the forearm alignment. Have you ever checked where your forearm alignment is? And what I mean by this is a lot of golfers, and this is including Alex, by the way, he was very much set up in this position here. Having a look from this camera here now, very, very open with the shoulders. But a very easy way of checking this is you can take the club and just place it in the middle of your arms like so here. And if our shoulders are open, we will notice that the lead arm is below the trail arm in this position here. If we were to raise our hands like so, and the opposite, if they're aiming too far to the left, we'd notice them go the opposite way like this here, where the lead arm is above the trail arm. You can see there as soon as I come in to set up, very much like this if the lead arm is ahead, very much like this over here if the lead arm is below from that position there. And what we noticed with Alex was when he was setting up to the golf ball, now we had the sternum very much in line and over the golf ball, his forearm alignment, and it was very easy to tell this because of the shoulder alignment, was pointing way too far to the left. So this was always going to encourage him on the downswing to swing very over the top and over the plane. And it's really important that we get this correct plane on the downswing to help with angle of attack, but also improving that shot shape. We don't want to see that horrible slice. We almost want to feel like we're trying to get more compressed, lower, more accurate, little draw shots. And what we did here is we just encouraged him to almost feel like he was tilting his arms from this position here. We just got him to bring his arms back into this position here. You can do this with the club as well if you wanted to, but just to lift his arms up like this here, take the grip as normal, take the club out in front of you if you wanted to, to make things slightly easier like so, tilt them over and then fall till the club reaches the ball and you can see here now we're almost set up quite close and this is what we had to get Alex to feel just to make sure that he was completely out of going this direction here and then causing that slice 
golf shop. And a lot of you may be thinking, well, hang on a sec, do I really need to set up that close? Well, if you're so used to being like this, you have to really exaggerate that feel. It's all to do with the feel versus real concept, which I talk about in a lot of videos. What will feel to you like you're doing the golf swing when you have a look at yourself on video may not be actually quite as exaggerated as you think. So we just ensure the feeling of the lead arm being slightly ahead of the trail arm like so, improving that forearm alignment. And from here now, I can take the club back up as normal. Very easy to get into this position here, nice on plane, and then swing down into this position here. And you can see from there, it's very easy for me just to rotate, squirt up the face, and hit much straighter golf shots. Coming more, slightly more on the inside and on plane, as opposed to getting too over the top, choppy, seeing that slice. So rather than swinging here, on the wrong path, we were doing this here just to ensure we were feeling the correct path. Almost feeling like we're trying to hit baby draws with the iron shot. So 150 yards here at St. Andrews on the 18th. I've got eight iron, no warm up, trying to play that low little draw shot. Really nice compressed strike, little draw, drawing away from the flag, but well away from the danger here at St. Andrews Golf Club. And look at that. Very easy put for me, birdie opportunity. Let's move on to tip number three. So tip number three involved Paul, who was really struggling with this over the top move again and seeing that slice ball flight with the irons, but also causing him to almost lose balance, leaning back in this position here on the way through, getting a little bit stuck. And I can imagine a lot of you golfers out there do get this feeling as well with the driver. So what he was doing, and this is a little bit of an awkward angle, but I've got to show you from this angle here, is that he was setting up, imagining there's my target line to the camera there, he was setting up with his hips very, very open in relation to where his feet were aligned to and his shoulders, but obviously we move the hips, it pushes the shoulders ever so slightly more open. And from this position here, it tilts my spine angle ever so slightly further back in this position here. And that causes us to almost hit up on the golf ball. So yes, it's going to be a little bit easier when it comes to hitting drivers or three woods off the tee, but when we're trying to get that great compression with the iron, it's gonna make things very, very difficult for us to do. We're almost hit the ground first because of the angle of attack, we're really leaning back and hitting here, or we'll jump up and almost hit that thinned topped golf shot. So all we got Paul doing was setting up, really feeling like his hip was forced, almost going close to the golf ball like this here. And that really encourages my spine angle now to almost tilt ever slightly more over the golf ball, almost feeling like it's going ahead, as opposed to moving this hip away from the golf ball and then slightly tilting this spine angle further back. We wanna see that hip almost feeling like we're going a little bit more towards the golf ball here. And then from there, that's gonna completely change that path here. Give myself loads of room now, give Paul loads of room now to come into the downswing and slot into this great position here. Hands nicely ahead of the club face and all we can do from there is easily rotate through to the finished position. So this not only improved his ball striking, but it also improved the direction of his golf shots because from this position here, we're gonna be leaning back out of the golf shot and possibly cause that two-way miss. If we get stuck from here, leave the face open or we end up flicking it and seeing it go the complete opposite direction. So if you've got that two-way miss in your golf game, just really check where your hips are aligned to and where your spine angle is positioned from taking the video from behind you. And from there, you can just adjust accordingly to ensure you're giving yourself plenty of room now to get into this position here, the slot that we want to be in just before the golf ball to rotate and execute through the shot. Tilting that hip ever so slightly more towards the golf ball, the lead hip completely changes where the swing comes into the golf ball. Better angle of attack. It's very easy for me to really compress down into the golf ball, turn through and look at that. Another very easy, comfortable shot. So tip number four requires me to move over to this angle here. I'm gonna bring the alignment stick just to make it easy for you to see what's going on here. So if I was to place the ball in this position here with the aim to almost see my target line as the corner of that net there, what we noticed Lewis do, as soon as he started the golf swing, he was almost moving away from the golf ball like this here. When I say almost, you could really see an exaggerated version as soon as we put an alignment stick in between his feet. You could really see this movement taking place here and you can see there, we're swinging very much round the body. We're twisting over, ensuring we're getting loads of pressure into the trail side of the body. But look at this, I am so far away from the golf ball now. So in reaction, what Lewis was doing, and a lot of golfers will do this as well, is they will have to come into the golf ball, starting with the upper body, bringing this over the top move into play, 
not meaning to, but to come back and hope for the best and get that contact solid, as opposed to getting those top shots, getting those duff shots, all sorts. This causes a load of issues for ball striking. So it's really important that we ensure we're staying over the golf ball, very similar to tip number one, keeping the sternum over the golf ball throughout your entire swing. So here's a great drill you can do to ensure that this stays the case. So you're going to take the club away for now. And what you're going to do is take your hands and put them across your shoulders like so. Just ensuring that that alignment stick is in the middle of your stance. And what you want to encourage is that trail hip, the right hip for right-handed golfers, is to push away from the golf ball there. You should be able to feel a little bit more tension in that external side of the right leg for right-handed golfers again. If we start to turn this way and get this almost shifting motion, forcing ourselves to move off the golf ball, then I'm not really rotating efficiently into the backswing. I'm not staying over the golf ball in this position here. So what we got Lewis doing was he was getting the feeling of that trail hip moving back, but also that lead hip moving almost towards the alignment stick here. And you can see we're getting that great turn, great twisting motion into the top of the golf swing without shifting behind the golf ball. So we take a club now, same feeling after doing at least five or six reps doing this into position, just feeling that trail hip moving towards the wall behind you and away from the golf ball, and then getting that lead hip moving towards the alignment stick we've set in the middle of the stance. And there you go, we can set ourselves in a great position here, and from there now, it makes it so much easier for us. We've got loads of room in the downswing to be able to make that solid contact. We can just execute through, turn through, and start to see those more consistent strikes, improving that accuracy also. So ball set up here, just in the middle of the stance for me, just so I can really exaggerate this feeling of the right hip going back, left hip going forward for right-handed golfers, allow myself to create that room in the backswing without shifting away from the golf ball. And again, nice little draw, drawing away from the pin, pin high, another easy birdie opportunity. So moving into tip number five now, which involved Paul. He came to see me last week, suffering with that open club face and seeing those rightward shots, really high, spinny, struggling to get any distance out of the shot because we're leaving the club face way open at impact. And what we noticed was at the start of the golf swing, the takeaway position, he was rolling the wrist way too much on the inside. And you can see in this position here, as soon as I roll the wrist, it's very easy for that club to move on the inside getting almost too connected between the arms and the body. And then what are we promoting? We're promoting the open club face take place. So as soon as we get to the top of the backswing, we're very open with this cupped position here. And as we're turning down, he was great at rotating through the shot, but what he would have to do last minute was, because he'd leave himself in this slot here where that club face is way open, almost encouraging the hosel of the club to be presented at the golf ball first. And obviously the danger of that is hitting those hosel rockets. So what he did was last minute, and a lot of you golfers will do this, is jump up, stop rotating, get stuck, and flick with the hands to try and square up that club face. And you can see that because we're jumping up early, extending out of our posture here, it makes it very difficult for us to get that center strike. See those thin shots, possibly duff shots if we don't lift up in time. So this causes a whole lot of issues. So let's show you now what we did with him just to help him scroll that face on the way back and start to see more consistent golf shots starting left of his target rather than fading way off to the right. And this is a great drill anyone can do and all it requires is an alignment stick. You're gonna take the alignment stick and place it on the left side of your grip like so with the majority of the alignment stick hanging away from you. I've spoken about this drill a lot in my lessons and it is a game changer. So we're going to take it here and place that alignment stick touching the left side of my body, so the lead side of the body for a right-handed golfer being the left side. And once we're set in position here, ready to hit the golf ball, we're not gonna try and hit any golf shots with this because if we do let go and it comes back, it does pretty hurt. So I've given it a try, don't bother trying this, but have the ball there just as a sensation of you're about to hit the golf ball. And from here now, if we roll the wrist on the inside, without me really doing much with my upper body, you can see that the alignment stick moves away from the body, opening up the club face like this here. So what we did, we just got Paul really trying to force that alignment stick to stay on the lead side of the body. Up until the point just before the shaft, the club shaft itself reaches parallel to the ground. So there's parallel, there's just before, almost in that P1 slash P2 position in the golf swing. This is really helping us now. You can see that club face staying more stable. If we work this up into shaft there parallel to the ground, it is on the same angle as my spine angle. So that leading edge 
is working in our favor. You can see there, leading edge, same angle as the spine angle. From there, I can easily rotate through and square out that club face, seeing those hands stay ahead of the golf ball, getting that great compression ball, then surf interaction, improving that accuracy and seeing those golf shots go more to the left and cut back on target as opposed to fading too far to the right. I actually filmed a live golf lesson which came out a couple of days ago on this topic with Paul himself. So feel free to check that out and just click the video over there for that. So we're eliminating that slice just by feeling and imagining that the alignment stick is there touching the lead side of the body. And when I do this now without the alignment stick, all I'm feeling is it's coming from the shoulders, taking the club head back in this position here, as opposed to seeing those hands and wrists wanting to start the golf swing, rotating them open like this here. And that was probably the best strike as well. Starting pretty much on my target, drawing a little bit now, eliminating that slice ball flight and look at that one final birdie opportunity so hope you enjoyed the video if you've come this far i would highly recommend taking a look at this video over here and it's all about setting the right arm in the correct position have you ever considered this it is so so important to get the ideal backswing and downswing great impact position to see better accuracy with your irons but also more distance with your driver so take a look at that thanks for watching stay tuned lots more to come and we'll see you next time